Too often when people talk about buying a new Mac, there's one Mac that gets overlooked, and that's the M4 iMac. It's dismissed as just being something that sits at the front of a shop or suitable only for kids and grandparents. But nothing could be further from the truth. It's an M4 Mac with M4 Apple Silicon inside of it, and it is a great Mac to use, and it's an iMac, which means it's going to last forever. So in this video, we're going to look at the do's and don'ts for buying your new iMac, and also, I'm going to tell you about one important option that I think you should choose to make sure that you unlock the full potential that an M4 iMac has to offer. I'm David, and this is D Talking iMac. Last week, I told you that my first ever Mac was a MacBook Air. Well, my second Mac was that 21 and a half inch iMac sitting behind me in the studio. I've always loved working on iMacs. Apple Silicon, as we know, changed everything. And the step to M4 Apple Silicon was the biggest jump forward we've seen since the first Apple Silicon Max of, what, four or five years ago. It's based on TSMC's three nanometer process, and these chips are quick, seriously quick, performance that we could only have dreamed of a few short years ago. And also, it's worth remembering that the iMac is massively important to Apple as a company. It helped, in some ways, to save the company and it's an iconic design. I bet if you were to ask somebody that wasn't in the tech space like we are, and you asked them to describe a Mac to you, it would be an iMac because of that chin, the stand, everything about it, the iMac is still a classic iconic design. They're great looking, powerful, fast, quick, and efficient. Now, any iMac that you choose, any iMac is gonna be great to work on, but if you get the specs right, they can be spectacular. The range currently starts at 1,300 pounds, I guess 100 pounds less if you've got a student discount, and goes all the way up to 2,900 pounds if you were to choose it with the nano texture display, with 32 gigs of memory, and with two terabytes of SSD storage. And it is a Mac that I think warrants being specced up. Even that top of the range iMac looks like a decent Mac when you think how good it honestly is. Now, there are some differences across the range, but before we look at those differences, let's look at the things that are the same across any iMac that you were to go and buy today. First of all, of course, starting with the display. That 24-inch, 4.5K, gorgeous retina display is the same across any iMac. They all have the same 12-megapixel center stage camera. They've all got the same six-speaker audio setup, which is really good, by the way, and the 3.5mm audio output jack, and they all now come with 120 gigs of memory bandwidth, so they're going to be quick. Now to the differences, and this is where things start to get interesting. That base 1,300-pound iMac with eight cores of CPU and eight core GPU that doesn't have the gig ethernet port. You can spec it for 30 pounds extra. It's on the brick if you remember, but it doesn't come as standard. Whereas if you step up to the 10 core iMac, the 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, then that comes as standard. That entry level Mac only has two Thunderbolt 4 ports. The 10 core iMacs, all of them from 1500 pounds and above have four Thunderbolt 4 ports. And I'll tell you why they're important a little bit later on. The base iMac can only be spec'd up to one terabyte of storage, whereas the 10 core iMacs they can be spec'd up to two terabytes of storage. If you're wondering about memory swap, well, these things all use two NAND chips. So in other words, if you're looking at the 256 gig model, that starts with two 128 NAND chips in it. The one terabyte has two 512 chips in it, and of course the two terabyte has two one terabyte chips in it. So these things are gonna be quick. And memory swap, and if you're not clear on what that is, it's where the SSD gets used as temporary RAM, should you be pushing your Mac really hard at any one time. The base model can only support up to one external 6K display at 60 hertz, but the 10-core Macs, well, they can support two 6K displays or one 8K display at 60 hertz. The base iMac only has one fan as well, whereas the 10-core iMacs, they get two fans. But it is worth remembering that the aluminium enclosure itself, the body, does act as part of the thermal management system. And to be honest, I've never found that heat has been an issue when I've been using any of my iMacs. Now, what to buy? Well. You just heard me tell you all the benefits you get from specking or buying a 10-core iMac. So I think that's a good starting point. I really do. Because if you look at the basic idea of going and buy that basic 1,300-pound uh, iMac and begin to add, say, a Touch ID keyboard, which is 150 pounds, and that 30-pound Ethernet port, well, suddenly you're at 1,480 pounds anyway. You might as well spend an extra 20 pounds and get into the iMacs with 10 cores of CPU and 10 cores of GPU. It just makes so much more sense because it unlocks the true and real power of an M4 iMac. As for storage, you could start at 256, but I wouldn't suggest that because out of the box, the OS, Mac OS is about 15 gigs, so immediately eating in to that storage that you've got anyway. I'd always go with 512 and probably one terabyte of SSD storage. 
I think that's probably the sweet spot actually one terabyte, not only because it gives you more internal SSD storage, but also, of course, don't forget these chips do suffer as they fill up and get older and they begin to performance throttle. So by buying that one terabyte chip, not only are you getting more storage to use from day to day, but you're also just giving yourself a longer shelf life as well. Now onto the RAM. I've said for a long time that the most important spec of an, any Apple Silicon Mac is getting enough RAM. Spend as much money as you can on RAM. I'd definitely go for 24 gigs of RAM. That's probably the sweet spot. Not only is extra RAM useful all of the time, but say it could very well be that this is being used as a family computer. You might have many users logging into it and that extra RAM is just gonna come in useful. So I'd definitely look to try and get to at least 24 gigs of RAM. And of course, this is a desktop computer. So those Thunderbolt 4 ports that I spoke about, well, it makes sense to use at least one of those for some external SSD storage. It's what I do. It's how I work. I've been working that way for the past year. And just to give you an idea of the costs of Apple, if you were to go and buy one terabyte of Apple storage on your iMac, it would cost you £200. For two terabytes, £600. Now, if you were to go and buy something like this, a Thunderbolt 4 enclosure, you can buy that for under £100. I think mine cost me about £80. And then you can go and also get some NVMe storage. I've used this Samsung stuff this year. I've been really happy with it. And just to give you an idea of the cost there, I bought my four terabytes of NVMe SSD storage for £290. So that means that my enclosure and my SSD cost me under £400 for four terabytes of SSD storage. And it's storage that I can use on any of my Macs. So I would seriously consider looking into buying some external SSD storage. It's modular, it's safe, and it's a really good way to go. But equally, I think it's worth looking at putting at least one terabyte on that Mac that you're, that iMac that you're going to buy. The iMac that I've just said with 24 gigs of memory on there and one terabyte of storage is going to cost £1,700. And I think that still looks great value for money. iMacs are built to last. I've said it a few times in this video. That's because they are built like tanks. I've never had one fail on me, touch wood. They will last forever. And that's why it's important to get the specs right early on. And the only complaint I've really heard anybody make about iMacs is that some people have said they've had some screen bleed. Now, I've not suffered from that but some people have said there's been some screen bleed issues. On to the wishes. Uh, whenever I make some iMac videos, there's always some wishes that come into the comments. First of those, ProMotion. Now, I think it's quite likely that we might get a 120 hertz ProMotion display on an iMac. That doesn't seem to be beyond the realms of reality and possibility. One of the comments that always comes out is people saying that an iMac is too small to work on at 24 inches, which I disagree with, by the way. But also people said they would love to see a 27 inch or a 32 inch Pro iMac with an M4 Pro chip in it. Now, I happen to think that that boat has sailed. I don't think we'll see a Pro iMac again because of the studio display, the Mac Mini, the Mac Studio. I just don't think we're going to see one of those large iMacs ever again. Sad as it is, that's my opinion. But one thing that I can't for the life of me think why Apple don't reintroduce is target display. They make a big issue about their environmental ethics and policies. What could be a better way to help to save the planet than if we used our old iMacs as secondary displays. We bought them anyway, they've already had our money. So rather than just sitting there, or even worse, being tossed away, why don't they reintroduce target display? I wish somebody could explain to me why we don't get target display back. And just to give you an idea of how good a value these iMacs currently represent, in my mind at least, if I was looking at the 10-core CPU, 10-core GPU, 14-inch M5 MacBook Pro that comes with 16 gigs of memory and 512 gigs of SSD storage, that's going to cost you £1,600. Now, if you look at that same spec iMac with 16 gigs of memory and 512 gigs of SSD storage, that's going to cost you £1,700, £100 more, plus you get an extra Thunderbolt 4 port on the iMac too. Now, I know the smaller MacBook Pro has got a better and a smaller but better display, but nonetheless, you've got to admit that these iMacs really do look great value for money. An iMac will give you the cleanest and best looking desk setup ever with no visible cables. You don't even need to have speakers or monitors on your desk. The speakers really are good enough for listening to music or podcasts during the course of a working day. They still make sense, they're still relevant, and they're still a great machine, even that fully tripped out 2,900 pounds machine that I spoke about, nano texture and two terabytes of storage. It's still a great machine. Don't be put off by thinking that these are just pretty colors and a cute design. They are a serious Mac that are really worth thinking about and buying and using day in and day out. If you've enjoyed this video, and I really hope you have, subscribing does help the channel grow, and I can't tell you how much it really generally matters. So it takes you seconds to do it. Subscribing and turn on notifications so you know when I've uploaded a video really does help the channel to get to new people. 
Also, if you want to get involved with the channel, I've got a Discord server. There's details of how you can join in with like-minded Apple fans during the week. Links to that are in the description. And also, every single weekend, I send out a free, totally free members video newsletter that talks about things that I can't really talk about on these main videos. So if you want to get involved with the channel and hear some of the background gossip that's going on, and there's quite a lot happening at the moment, you can leave me your details over my website, talkingtechandaudio.com. Again, there's links to that in the description below. If you've enjoyed me talking about the iMac in this video and the do's and don'ts and what I think you should do to spec out and buy the right iMac for you, I'm leaving you another iMac video to watch now telling you why I always end up at some point coming back to iMacs.